Hey guys, in this lesson, we take a look at how to create smoke blowing out of a mouth in Anime Studio. For this tutorial, we'll be creating a very specific type of smoke effect, and that is smoke coming out of a mouth from, you know, a cigarette or something else. And you can apply this to any type of character, or if you want to, you could tweak it and have it be a smoke effect for different types of objects, and so forth. As you can see, we have a character already on screen, and if we just come over here to frame one on the timeline, we can just click, rewind, and then hit play, we can see what the original smoke effect from Buddies looks like. Again, it's pretty convincing, just kind of comes out of the mouth, extends out, and then it evaporates into the ether. So what we're going to do here is remove or hide that layer and create a new vector layer for this tutorial and we will name it smoke. Hit enter and now we can start from scratch. So first we're just going to come in here zoom in a little bit on the mouth. We're on frame zero with the add point tool and we're going to draw the smoke effect in its almost completed state. Make sure that your guides are on, and we're just going to come in here and draw out, again, what you would see the smoke in its final state, not so much the beginning state, because in a way here, we're going to kind of work backwards. The smoke can look however you want it to. You can see we're just kind of creating a squiggly, horizontal-looking object, and that's all that's really required initially here, and then we can connect it at the end, take the create shape tool and then we will click on the smoke and what we're going to do here is hit create shape and then we'll hide the stroke we don't want the stroke for the smoke and for the fill we want to leave it white so if you have it any other color just make sure it's white now we will also be applying a soft edge to this effect so we can just go to that effect drop down menu and choose soft edge and let's set the blur radius to about 20 and then click OK. So now if we hit control R that will render out the current frame as how the audience will see it and we can see kind of what this looks like so it's looking pretty good. So from here we can do a little bit more if we go to the style palette again and click on the fill color we can adjust the transparency so we can move this dial downward to about right here, not quite halfway, maybe about a quarter of the way and click OK and then render this out again with Control R and we can see now that it looks more convincing with that transparency. So from here now what we're going to do is take the Translate Points tool and we're just going to adjust the beginning here, the first part of the smoke and we're just going to make it so that it kind of lines up here with the lips a little bit easier. Where we anticipate the opening of the mouth will be. We can also use the curvature tool to kind of tighten things up, you know, get those nice straight looking edges. And from here now, what we can do is highlight the whole smoke with the select points tool. Take the scale points tool, we can shrink it up a little bit like that, and then we can come over here to the origin point and set the origin point so that it's where the mouth opening will be, where we anticipate it will be. Since we already have a mouth opening animation, this will be easy to set. If you don't have one, again, you can kind of anticipate it, or you should maybe create the mouth movement first to make it easier. So we're going to take the transform layer tool and shrink this down as far as you can get it. You can see as we shrink it down, it kind of does a mirror effect where it snaps back and forth. You'll want to make sure that it doesn't go back like it was, but just get it as small as you can. You can even shrink it in, you know, a little bit horizontally and bring it up to where you think the mouth will be when it opens. And as we can see here, as it opens, we're a little bit too high with the smoke. So we can come in here now on frame one here and just move this down a little bit with our transform layer tool. Play this out again and it's looking pretty good. We might need to do a little bit more adjusting so we can just kind of come in here on frame one again and just move it 
up a little bit and then play it out again and we can see now that it's lining up and it's going to work how we need it to work. So now the next step here is to find a frame where we can start the animation process. So let's go on frame 6. We'll zoom in here and we will click and then with the transform layer tool we'll click to create that keyframe and then we will advance forward now to frame 48 and then we can expand the smoke outward again with the transform layer tool and the reason why we created that keyframe is so we can have that point the origin point from where it begins to animate out so you can see now from frame 6 it starts to animate to frame 48 it's just a simple expansion from the origin point but there is more that we can do here to make things look a little bit more convincing we're gonna actually first come in here and move the smoke a little bit more away from the mouth as it expands out on frame 48 just to kind of give the effect that it's floating away and then we can take the translate points tool and come here on frame 12 and we will click that edge point at the beginning of the smoke and then drag it more towards the mouth and we can do the same for a couple of the points there just to kind of give it the effect it's almost stretching out as it expands you can see it kind of has that effect play out of course it's kind of overlapping now on the character itself so we can come to frame 48 here take those offending points and we can take the translate points tool here and kind of move it like that so it's not overlapping on the mouth anymore and we can shrink it in to make it look like it's going away from the mouth and you can see now we even have some subtle movements occurring with the smoke to give off even a more dynamic effect of the smoke so so far it's looking pretty good and there are a few more things we can do as well so first we're going to click with our translate points tool on frame 30 just to get those keyframes in and then we're going to come to frame 48 and we're just going to create kind of an expanded view of the smoke now the reason why we set those keyframes down beforehand was so that we can have a start point for this we don't want it to expand outward like this right away from the start of frame 1 we're going to have it start again at frame 30 and then kind of expand outward like we're doing right now so you can see we're just doing some quick adjustments here getting the smoke to look a little bit different and this will really add to the effect as it floats away this transformation effect that we'll be creating here and then we can kind of come back here and see how it looks so it comes out like that and it kind of blows up a little bit more and even almost kind of shrinks into itself a little bit you know it's almost like it's colliding with itself as it expands outward so what we can do now is if we need to we can adjust things a little bit we're just gonna move the keyframes out slightly here just to make it a little bit slower and reposition the positioning of the endpoint here we can see that's how it looks in its current state come in here and do a little bit more adjusting it might be going a little bit too slow so we can bring in the keyframes for the translate points tool here a little bit just like that and it might be going a little bit too slow still so we can nudge it in a little further and we can also if we wanted to adjust the endpoint as well but let's see how it looks here first it's looking good but let's just move those keyframes in a little bit anyway just to kind of see how we can get it to look here hit play and there we go it's looking pretty good so now the next step here move the uh, transform layer tool out just a little bit away from the scale just so the scale stops before the movement again just to give it a little bit more of a dynamic effect here you can see it's subtle but it's uh it works pretty good but what we can do here now is double click on the smoke and we are on frame zero 
So we're going to deselect visible and then select allow animated layer effects and then click OK. Now the smoke is invisible completely and you can tell this by the red shade on the timeline. We're going to go to frame 6 and then double click on the smoke again and then click visible and then we'll come over here and click OK. So for the first six frames it's invisible but then it's going to reappear after frame 6. So now what we can do is come right about here and double click and we will choose then to reduce the opacity to 99. Why such a small change? Well it allows us to create a keyframe for the opacity on that frame. We can then advance to the last part of the animation or near it at least. So let's advance just a little bit here to about right here and then we can double click on the smoke again and choose the opacity to be zero and then click OK. So the dissipate effect then doesn't happen right away. It happens only from the frame we set that keyframe down with and we can now see what it looks like. We'll just turn the guides off and we can see that it's looking pretty good. Now there's also adjustments you can continue to make. I mean there's several adjustments you can make. It just depends on your situation. For instance, if we wanted the dissipate effect to change, we can move the keyframes back so that it dissipates sooner like so. And it's something that you just have to kind of keep playing with. It's again just going to depend on your circumstance. Let's bring back the original just to see what this looked like. You can see the original probably looks a little bit better and that's because when we animate we have more time to work on the details. When you're doing a tutorial on the fly it can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to get everything how you want it but the example here is still very solid. So anyway, this has been an incredible joint tutorial. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I have done the narration for this video. Jim Mills recorded the tutorial and this is his smoke effect, also from the series Buddies, so be sure to check that one out if you haven't. And if you would like more incredible tutorials, you can visit IncredibleTutorials.com or check out the Incredible Tutorials channel. And be sure to subscribe so you can get more videos. And we are also on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.